Hey guys, today I'm back with another battery by Go Kilowatt Hour. I've already done a review on one of their other models. This is one step above that. So this battery here actually comes with a screen that gives you detailed stats as far as your voltage, the current going in and out, the temperature, and your state of charge, which is great. This is actually hooked up to the BMS. It's not just running off of voltage, which is very inaccurate. So this battery comes with an app. So let's check out the app now. And you can see in the app, I've already fully charged and we're still balancing. So that's great. We're gonna get the cells down to a proper level. Now I did notice when I was charging that I had one of the cells go up to like 3.8 volts, which to me is too high of a voltage for a single cell. Should only be up to like 3.65 volts. So that was a little bit concerning while charging and the battery itself got up to almost 15 volts before it stopped charging. So that's a little bit high on the top end. Now with this app, I have an aftermarket version of this app, so I'm able to see parameters and change parameters. So let's take a look at what their parameter settings are. Okay, so we can see here, uh, over voltage 3.75, uh, over voltage release 3.6, and then we have uh, under voltage of 2.2 volts. I think that should be about 2.5. So that's gonna bring the release up a little bit. Yeah, see, overpack voltage, 15 volts. As far as I know, it should be 14.6 volts for your cutoff voltage. Pack under voltage, 8.8 .8 volts, that's too low. Should be like 10, 10.5 volts. And charging under temperature is minus 10. Charging under temperature should be zero degrees and the release should be like plus five. So these temperature settings are too low. And then also you can see here under Balancing turn on voltage is 3.3. You need to have the voltage when the cell is on its upcline from the steady line. So that should actually be like 3.43 volts would be a better voltage for the balancing to actually start to engage. So that's the app here. So let's take a closer look at the battery itself. So as you can see here, we have the front of the battery. They could have done a better job of applying the sticker. We have air bubbles everywhere on here, but that's just cosmetic. On the top of the battery, we have the QR code to get the uh, app for the battery. And we also have a screen here. And then again, we have the back of the battery. And if you scan this, I believe you'll get the uh, manual for the battery. So that's pretty much it. And we have our nylon strap. And you can see here we have little caps that we can actually unscrew to get the lid off to have a look inside. And the discharge test has begun and we're still ramping up. And you can see there we are discharging with about 70 amps. So this test should not take very long at all. So I'll be back with the results and we'll see what they are. And the capacity test is over. We scored in at 101.7 amp hours out of the 100 amp hour battery. This test is a pass. Let's open it up and see what the internals look like. Okay, so I've got the pack out. Now we have pouch cells, which is fine. Lithium iron phosphate pouch cells is fine. Uh, we have a BMS here. Uh, maybe I'll check the translating app. So it's a 100 amp BMS, so that's good. I wanna do a cold temperature test. Um, even though it's at minus 10, I'm still gonna do the test to see if the BMS is capable of cutting the charging. So I'm gonna use a duster. This is gonna make it below minus 10 degrees Celsius. So it'll, I'll see if we can even at least just disconnect. Give that a second. Yeah, see it did disconnect, but again, we're disconnecting at minus 10, which is too low for lithium iron phosphate, should be zero degrees. So this temperature sensor was tucked into the cells I'm gonna put that back in there. And we have six gauge silicone wire coming up and we have two eight gauge silicone wires for the negative. And that's coming down to the main or negative here. Here's the main positive. And let me see the Translate app. So this is a Jabata BMS. I believe it's uh, JBD. So we have a JBD BMS, which is actually a really good uh, BMS on here. JBD is uh, actually kind of one of my favorite BMS's. So that's nice that they have that. We can see on the lid that we do have wires coming out, multiple wires. So this is not just voltage. 
and that is coming over to the UART port on the BMS. We have our temperature sensor here, which is down in by the pack, which is nice. And then this is our balance lead cables that are running out to the battery for balancing. And you can see the BMS there. Okay, and there you have it, my review. I think they need to fix the parameters. If you are using the appropriate charger and you have your charge controller set up right, nothing should go wrong, but the BMS protection I think is too broad. But if you're using the appropriate chargers and if you're using the appropriate inverters and that, you're not gonna come into a situation where it's gonna be depleted too far or charged too much. The cold temperature protection needs to be zero degrees. So again, protect yourself if you're gonna use this battery. This is a cheap alternative. It is cheaper than buying lead acid batteries now. Uh, so it comes with some features that probably are helpful to some people. I'll leave it up to you and your discretion. And as always, thank you very much for watching. Bye.